time now to refresh and redesign homes in need of TLC right around the country. Your design questions are answered each week by our experts. In fact, to get involved, please send your questions to realestateatyourmoney.com.au and our panel of experts will discuss them, maybe give you some tips and advice there. We're joined, of course, by interior designer and auction day host James Treble and renovating for profit founder Sheree Barber. Thank you both for being with us here Thank on you. Wednesday oh. evening. Now, um, we'd like to kick straight off with a question because we always find that time is a bit of an issue. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> Nando uh, asks, we're hoping for a bit of guidance regarding our current renovation. We're a bit stuck on the facade. Uh, can you help? We get asked about facades occasionally, don't we? Um, mm. sure. yeah. and now, we like facades. What, what do you think of this one? Okay, it's great. Look, it looks like it's a really good structurally sound property. It's just obviously a little bit cosmetically challenged, so... <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are more than others. <laughs> You're very tactful, <laughs> isn't no, I like that. It's diplomatic. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, um, this is actually, well, well, let's go back to Nando's first. So, Nando's got a, just a, a blonde brick house. Mm -hmm. um, it's really sort of screaming out for cement render. Yes, yeah. um, you know, the, the fences all around the property f make it feel a little bit fortress-like. Yeah. So, I'd be inclined to maybe knock a couple of rows, maybe six or seven rows of the bricks off and bring the fence down. Not too low, but not, not keep it as high. Um, so, definitely cement render would do, do that that, that house wonders, but cement render for him to render that house with a professional, it's going to cost at least somewhere yeah. between 10 to 20 grand, depending on how many angles. Mm. So, what I've done here is I've actually shown um, this is a project I did maybe seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and what it was, it was a similar house, it was just a um, brick house, partly red brick house. And all I did was talk to it with the spray gun, so you can just see what a lick of paint. Um, can actually do for a property there. It's instantly yeah, it's transformed great. it. Wow, yeah. um, and that was, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, not ten or twenty thousand mm. dollars. So I think in the first so instance... So painting bricks, you reckon, is an option? Yeah. Look, I, I'm not a huge fan of painting bricks. Um, I, I always say, if you can, always render. Because what a lot of people don't realise is that once you paint bricks, you make it incredibly hard for the renderers to come back and render if you ever change your mind. Because what happens is render, if you paint the bricks, the render is sticking to the paint, not the bricks. So what happens is the cement renderers have to come and chip, it, hack into every single brick. Delaminate. Um, yeah, to basically get the render to stick to the bricks. So that adds a few extra thousand mm. dollars to the cost of the render bill. So you're going to have to really think long and hard. If you think you'll never render that house, knock yourself out Correct. paint yeah. it. The design theory of what's actually she's doing so beautifully and does often in the designs is unification. So because there's uh, finishes that are too busy, particularly on that house that you did, there was the cream bottom with the different top. By using the same colour, and in this case it was cheaper to watch the budget to paint the bricks in this case and match it to the cladding, it just gave that uniformed look. In that case, less is more, and then all of a sudden the white detail in the wedding cake, the, the railing and the window frames popped and you picked it up in the fence and it was really successful transformation. I don't mind painting bricks as much in that scenario because I think that it would give life for longer and the age of the house, maybe then you would look at, look, is it time to knock down, rebuild and transform this house? Because as long as, as much as I love renovating, sometimes homes just don't suit a modern family's needs. Can yeah. I quickly ask, you know, you showed that photo of the, the place that you painted with the grey and the white? Yes. Which seems to be, wherever you go and people redoing the outside of their house it's the grey and the white do you have a favorite grey at the moment because I've done this mm. and you know you go to the greys and it's like which <laughs> grey am I going to choose I do I must okay, be best I want a name of which one is good well my favorite is Torbman's oil shale but that's a really dark grey okay oh. yeah it's beautiful. Okay, a dark grey. Do you have a light grey favourite that you can think um, of? Light grey would be Dovetail's the not outside bad, it's a little bit because it's very yeah. different to consider Do you know what? I will grey. tell you this. Stay tuned next week, guys, and I'll bring in Fandex, and between us okay. we'll give some options of greys because it's a common question. We might have a grey off. No, we're yes. going to do 50 shades of grey next week. Oh, <laughs> stop <laughs> it. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. What's Thank those greys that go through, through the that. roof? So, especially on the outside, it's very hard to do yeah. with the lights. Yeah. It's a really good outside. question, Brooke, and people and get scared. And mine was too light. So we'll do some mid-tones and some deeper. Yeah. And just remember with paint colour, one thing that everyone needs to remember, when you pick it in the store and you look at the paint colour, it's always two shades lighter outside because yeah. you've got direct sun on it yeah. and usually two shades deeper inside. So just always remember that when yeah. you do colours because I get people saying, isn't this beautiful? Look at it outside yeah. and it can be completely different. Well, I reckon yeah. that's what I did because I picked kind of a nice light one and I was yeah. going to have the contrast of the white on the windows, we'll but then, you know, you it wasn't up, enough. Brooke. It was quite yeah. 
light went ended up putting it. It looked really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I could have done a few shades darker. If, uh, if anyone at home is Googling Torben's oil shale, they can tweet at Brooke Cordy. Yeah. <laughs> get that one off the Here ground. it is. Too late. Absolutely. It was too late. Because <laughs> I already paid my money. But a yeah, it still looked nice. A lot of people make that mistake with the roof spraying. They go to the store, they get a roof spraying colour, they come back, it looks completely different mm. because yeah. of the UV mm. exposure. I had a roof careful. once on a display home that was shale grey, which is a really light grey, but because of it was that angle and the sun's hitting at that angle, it looked like white. white. It looked like surf mist, which is yeah. the mm. colour bond standard white because okay, yes. right. of the angle. 50 okay. Shades of Grey coming to your money next <laughs> week. Right, now, <laughs> Diane's got another question for us for tonight. Can you please give me some advice as to how to improve the look of my property? Got some photos to help uh, viewers question. play along? Yeah, so this is a property that Diane's got. It's um, a red brick property. Um, it's probably from the 1970s. Again, structurally in really good condition, but she's got some external fixtures and fittings that are looking really old. Very similar to the last house, mm. Render. This was this is a brown brick house. So what I would do if I was Diane, I would cement render all of the facade. If she's only got a very limited budget, because let's face it, not everybody has 10 to 15,000 to render mm. their whole house. What Diane could do is a partial render where you render just the front facade and you wrap the render one or two metres around the left and right yeah. side. And that'll typically only cost around two to $3,000. Big difference. Um, what I would do is I'd actually remove the polycarbonate. That's probably seen better days and I would put a darker aluminium there. Just taking the security door off and painting her, I guarantee you behind that, I'm going to say ugly security door. Yeah. There's probably a really nice front you can door say that hiding on behind. You won't get in trouble. No. Um, and you know, paint that front door really poppy colour. I think it really needs a lot of sprucing up landscaping wise, really letting it down. 100%. So I would definitely be ramping up the landscaping, you know, putting some mixed plants, um, you know, girding the driveway. You can, I can see as a professional renovator, there's a lot of built up dirt and grime on that driveway. So high pressure water cleaning, you know, and the front fence, the front fence is a little bit mismatched. So I'd probably be inclined to yeah. knock it down. It looks like she might be on a busy road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if it is on a busy road, keep the front fence, yeah, extend correct. the gate out. So it goes all the way to her drive, maybe, and then spray paint that um, or render that in the same color as the house, just for uniformity. Okay. Oh, what do you think, James? Yeah, hundred percent agree with all of that. The front fence is terrible. Replace it, unifying the finishes. Screen door's got to go, add a punchy color. And that roof, because it's aged and it looks worn, it's it's actually pulling down the whole rest of the home much more so that's definitely got to go yeah. and replacing it by something darker means you won't see through and see all the leaf drop and the the pigeon yeah. and as you can see from that food at photos some of the stuff that's inside the house becomes integral to how it looks on the outside yeah, yeah. Looking at the curtains yeah, yeah. The furniture's not doing any help on this styling of this furniture you know no. a timber bench from Bunnings a couple of pots mm. on either side the you can add color shutters. there I mean, yeah, yeah of course and well, having the same unified so even curtains that just drop you can get them you know rolled up in a pack from yeah. Ikea or something like this really cheap make it unified from the front and just it's pairing back unification yeah. just makes things less is more in the finishes mm. yeah. it's too busy speaking of blinds and shutters is one yes. better than the other um, blinds, pull down blinds, we're going to talk about this, we've got some details. Pull down blinds are cheaper to do this, so Holland blinds are easier. Um, here's some shots that I just wanted to show. So these are actually panel blinds that come in a slide. They're great, but you do always block the side of them. I'm not a massive fan, but they can look quite modern. The, um, vertical blinds, believe it or not, come back in a new, clean, modern way. They're not joined on the bottom, so the cat gets through and the kids run through and them all break. So this is a modern clean. These images are all just from Luxaflex. Not paid to have them there, but they've just got a big range. This is um, a nice... Uh, Roman blinds so they can fold up on each other and just give a nice soft fabric finish and these are roller blinds so otherwise known as um, Holland I use these all the time up and down blinds really modern you can use different kinds that you can see through to get a view and block glare but you'd need a block out for bedrooms and there's modern ones like this one here where you can use it externally so it's great to be able to use a blind to drop down to make an alfresco be able to use in different times of the year where it's really strong westerly sun might bake in there and you can use this space. Mm. So they're really clever uses. Another window covering, of course, you can see there just a nice beautiful combination that can drop down. So it's just giving you a beautiful unified look, but no clear through vision, just the light coming through. And these are Venetian blinds. So those old Venetians that were bent with metal that used to clink and pull and they all break, there's modern versions of those too. So don't be afraid to use uh, Venetian blinds. Here's this one in this bathroom. Look how sexy that is. Mm -hmm. You'd want to have a shower in there. Plantation shutters. Yes, so this are is they, just are they plantation shutters of the king ping. Okay, they're they're the best. <laughs> so this is, look at this. They're giving that oh, plantation good. house look, right? That's yeah. why they're called plantation shutters. A resort feel. I love them because you can flick them one way yeah. and have the light come through 
through and flick them another. So white's mm. generic, goes with everything. Mm. Timber for a beautiful plantation feel, or you can go really dark and sexy with a, you know, a darker moody one, but I love them. They're easy to wipe for asthmatics too instead of curtains. I love plantation shutters, they're just pricey. Yeah. They're about $400 yeah. a square yeah. meter. Yeah. So. so if you're watching your budget, use them on the front facade of the home. Yeah. There's a unifying again, so on the yeah, front windows. Yeah, and on a semi-busy road as Diane looks like she yeah. had that last one. Yeah. They're good on a semi, you know, kind of busy a busy road. road because you get that full privacy yeah, and you just yeah. get the They're really good for well. upstairs bathrooms because you put them at the angle like this or the sunlight yeah. comes through and you can have a shower or your kids or your daughter or whatever and nobody can see them from downstairs yeah. but you get the light. So it gives you privacy but easy to clean. Flip them one way, dust them, flip them the other. Okay, yeah. so for price-wise though, plantation shutters, quite um, expensive. Yeah. Are you any kind of go-tos for yes. people like needing to save a bit more money? If you're definitely on a budget, they have, you've got the aluminium slimline Venetians. Mm. You can get those at stores like Bunnings off the shelf. Very cheap. Um, a lot of people don't realise you can cut them down to size yeah, as well. Trim them on no, the and then the next level up is sort of like you would express range. They're your your timber Venetians that you can get in the natural timber, but a lot of companies do them in white. So as a renovator on a budget, for me, I always stagger between either the aluminium slim lines or more often yeah. than not the wood timber Venetians in correct. white. Yep. It's giving um, the plantation look on a cheaper budget. Okay. And, and your, your job internally is to lighten and brighten, so normally your blinds internally should be lighter mm. unless you've got a more modern It's really color funny scheme. to think that a thing that we put on windows to block things being seen is called a blind. Don't you think that's weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've thought about that here. way more than I have, yes. for sure. But yeah, <laughs> I'll think about that in the break. James, Cherie, thank you so much, guys. Thank See you. See you next week for our grey special. Well, it sounds kind of bland, but I reckon it's going to be no, awesome. it's exciting. Just quietly. <laughs>